Hey folks, Matt from writeoftheimage.com. Got a question in here from Katrina on the email. Headline of the uh, the topic for the email is the right lenses for India. Hi Matt, I hope this email finds you well. I just por- purchased a D7200 and I'm heading to India in a few weeks. I want to take photos of architecture, uh, architecture the Taj Mahal, Golden Temple, the Ghats in Varanasi, Varanasi, I hope I'm saying that right, street scenes, markets, people, etc. I'm having trouble deciding what lenses to purchase and take with me. A few people have told me to take one lens and that it should be a 35mm. So I bought the 35mm F1.8G and the 50 F1.8G lenses because it's gotten great reviews. In hindsight, however, I'm realizing that after the crop factor, I'm only getting a 52 and a 75 millimeter fields of view, respectively. I was looking forward to the full 35, not too wide and not too narrow. With that said, can I use a 24 mil lens to achieve 35 millimeter photos? I'm considering the Nikon 24 mil F1.8 GED and the Sigma 18 to uh, to 35 F1.8 specifically. Do you suggest going this route? Any drawbacks, distortion maybe? Lastly, another person told me that as a beginner, I should learn to use my camera with the flexibility of a zoom such as the 18 to 140 even if I forsake sharpness for reach. So another option is sticking with the 35 F18G and swapping the 50 for a 18 to 140. Is this a more well-rounded choice? Thank you in advance for your help. I've been poring over your videos for days and it's been an education. You're a tremendous source of information. Best wishes, Katrina. Well, thank you very much, Katrina, and thank you for your question. A couple of things here. First of all, 24 mils, yes, will give you very close to 35. So no problem to use the 24 F18G. Uh, and if you're, if you're looking for more of the 35 look, because you're right, with the crop factor applied, you got that 1.5 crop. Um, and then you said you're also considering the 18 to 35 F18. For me, I will go the 18 to 35 F18 because it gives me more flexibility over a fixed 24. And uh, I've got F18 throughout the zoom range. So, yeah, I think that's a good option. And distortion, I don't really think so. I think you're going to find that's a very good performing lens. And it would be one of my top choices here out of what you're um, discussing and looking at. Then you're talking about instead going with an 18 to 140 and sticking with the 35 F18G um, as a pair of lenses to take with you. This may be the better route uh, because if you're doing travel photography, typically you're going to want a all around zoom, which is the 18 to 140, is closer to that. You might even want to look at an 18 to 200 or 18 to 300 if you can afford it, because that will give you a huge range and give you much more telephoto. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of shots you're going to get. And those are all decent performing lenses. Are they the sharpest lenses in the bunch? No, but they're capable of very good image quality. And those are the type of lenses I would want to take, either an 18 to 140 or an even longer one like the 18 to 200, 18 to 300, if I'm going on travel and I'm shooting architecture and street scenes and markets and things like that. I would want, personally for me, if you like the 35mm F1.8G for that um, range, for that focal length, then then by all means, take that with one of those zooms. For me, I'd probably take the 50 F1.8G just because I love it. It's a little, I'm, I'm more partial to that little bit longer um, focal length and it makes a great portrait lens. So that's probably what I would go with, but I certainly would have no problem with you taking the 35 F1.8 and the 18 to 140. It's always a preference thing. Some people do prefer 35s um, and a little bit wider to the longer. I'm a 50 fan on crop sensor bodies, always have been. And I love, I have a 50 F1 4D from Nikon right now. I love the, all of them. I love, <laughs> I've got an older SC Nikkor from years back in the 60s. It's an F1 4. I've owned the F1 8G. I don't have it here right now. I, 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 I sold it in, in favor of the F1 4D um, just simply because I can't afford to have every 50 I love out there. <laughs> <laughs> or it doesn't make sense anyways. So yeah, um, that probably is a better option for you than getting the 18 to 35 F18. I would get the, if you could afford the 18 to 35 F18, I'd probably get an 18 to 200 or the 18 to 300 um, and go with that because uh, it gives you a really good range for travel. And then I would add either that 55 year you're talking about, the F18G, or the, um, uh, the 50. So either that 35 or the 50. Uh, for speed. What do you guys think though? Do you agree with me? Would you go with the more all-around zoom with the longer range and sacrifice the speed as well as having a prime? Or would you do um, the Sigma 18-35 F1.8 instead? Let us know in the comments below. Let us know which way you would go. Let's help out Katrina here, help her make her decision and uh, kind of focus down on her thought patterns and what she's going to need here. Thank you for your question again and stay tuned. Oh, 
enjoy your trip to India. Love to see some photos afterwards. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.